California's gold is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California public television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. It all started on this rather desolate looking, undeveloped piece of land beside the road in Baldwin Park, just east of LA. The beginning of a dream. You see, Harry and Esther Snyder had always wanted to open up a little burger stand, a place of their own where quality and customer service came first. And back in 1948, they did it. They built and opened their little business, and it was a little place. But it was an overnight sensation. People loved it. They could stay in their cars and order burgers from a speaker box, which was revolutionary. The burgers were great too, and the customers were treated well. Who would have guessed in a million years that this would be the beginning of what would grow into a string of over 200 stores? with millions of loyal customers, and in fact become part of California legend and lore. It's a rather remarkable and wonderful story. A story about In-N-Out Burger, which is very much a part of California's gold. It all started in Baldwin Park, and it continues in Baldwin Park, because these days the In-N-Out complex of buildings and offices covers a huge area. Now we were invited to spend the day there, visiting the facilities, talking with employees, and seeing firsthand just how In-N-Out works, why it's so successful. <laughs> just driving around the area got me excited because this would truly be both an adventure and a learning experience. Okay, the adventure begins. We're standing by the Spanish fountain. We're standing in front of the Spanish architecture with the door with In-N-Out burgers over it. And I'm standing here with, introduce yourself to everybody, Mark. Hi, I'm uh, Mark, Mark Taylor, uh, president of In-N-Out Burger. You're the president of yes. In-N-Out Burger Incorporated. I guess I am. All That's right. It. <laughs> now, we've already kind of set this up. Harry and Esther Snyder started In-N-Out Burger right here in Baldwin Park, okay. right outside of Los Angeles in 1948. That's right. One store, one store to over 230 in four states today. So All right, that's what we've grown to, 230 stores. You right. call them stores, not yes. restaurants. No, we call them restaurants and stores. We refer to them as stores mostly, though. In four states, four. California, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Yes. The important thing about in and out burger though is that it is still a family owned and operated business not one franchise that, that's absolutely correct you were on our third generation and uh, we're still family owned and operated in and out continues to uh, put its value in its people and uh, that's why I think we're so successful. There's never been, because there are rumors out there from time to time right. that you're gonna start franchising but it is still 100% family on. Yes, that is true, and those are just rumors. You know, well, I got to tell you, there's been many rumors. I've heard them all, but uh, Lindsay's intentions, she's our owner, is to keep us uh, privately held, family held, and uh, we're here to make sure that continues that way. So. All right, now we're standing in front of this beautiful Spanish building here in Baldwin Park, which is where it all started. Because you've always been family owned and operated, You've never really sought out publicity, have you? No, that's absolutely true. This is actually a big deal for us. <laughs> um, we're honored, you know, California Gold is a great show. Uh, in and out is a California icon. It is probably part of California's gold, so uh, it seems right. Well, you know what? It's a big deal for us to be here. It's a big deal for you to have us here because you really very seldom open up the doors to the inner sanctum and kind of let people see 
in and out from the inside out. It's never happened. So this is an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> well, this I'm wearing exclusive. my in and out yep. shirt. Yes, you are. That's I'm awesome. ready for the day. Yes. This is going to be a lot of fun and a learning experience for all of us because it does not get any more California, any more quintessential California than in and out Burger. And that's is where we're going to spend the whole day, right here in Baldwin Park, exploring the history, the past, the present, and the future of good old in and out Okay, there it is, the iconic in and out Burger sign. And I'm standing here with three iconic in and out Burger former employees. Chuck, your name is? Chuck Pappas. You started in? March 1st, 1954. 1954. Bob Williams started in September 1958. You're the baby of the I'm group. The baby of the group. And your name, sir? Bob Lang Sr. and I started November of 1954. So I think you're the first Senior. employee. Uh, yeah, I think so. What was it like working for in and out back then? Because it hadn't yet gotten its cachet going yet, had well, it? Well, it was a little slower back then. Uh, late at night, uh, uh, Cook was uh, by himself after 9 o'clock at night, and so he was here till closing by himself. What did you do when you came to work for him? Well, I started right there in the back room. Right know, here? Right here. Now this isn't number one, is the it? The original number one was right over there under the underpass. And they, they moved over here just as I start, just started. So when they built the freeway, they had to move. Right, they had to move it over here. All right, now, so you were flipping burgers. No, I was just part-time at the time. So I was working in the back room doing all the food prep. You weren't even flipping burgers yet. Not yet, not yet. You were doing what? Well, when I started, just like Chuck and everybody else, just starting in the back room peeling potatoes and doing lettuce and if you're lucky you got to come inside and wait on customers. So the big deal was moving from the back up to the, the front where the customers you, were. You bet. That's How right. many potatoes did you peel before you got up front? A whole lot. <laughs> like, like Bob said it was to get up front that was your goal to try to get up there and some people spent six months in the back room. Uh, in my case I got up front a little earlier and I got to work up there with uh, with Harry and, and the whole uh, so crew. So you actually worked with Harry Snyder, who founded in and out Yeah, he hired me. Was he working in the oh, yeah. restaurant day in and day out? Yeah, he was here almost daily. Every night he was here, like well, Chuck said we would close, maybe just one of us. He was always in the back room working on the speaker system or stuff like that, and he would come and help you when he needed help. And then he would go back out and work on the speaker system. When you were working here in those early days, did you have any idea what this was gonna grow into? Was it just a job for you? Was it just another burger place? Well, it wasn't just another burger place. It was a pretty unique because it was a family and you got real, real soon you learned it was a nice family operation. But for me, I was going to college and I was gonna be a couple of years and I was gonna go on to four year school and, and you know, so I, it was just a part-time job. Then I developed into a full-time job, and you know, you get married and you have a family, and, and you just keep working, and, and you love you your job. And you stayed with them all That's these right. years. The family, the Snyder family. Did, do you all have the same kind of hands-on stories about Harry and Esther? Oh yes, uh, Harry hired me also. In fact, I rode my bike down Garvey Avenue, met with Harry one night after school, and he hired me on the spot. And uh, I used to work with Harry a lot. He used to uh, cook shifts. We worked six days a week back then, and uh, Harry would work a shift to relieve the, the days off, and so I, got a, I had the opportunity to work with him often, and he really taught me a lot. Now, would he teach you things like how to cook a good hamburger? Not only how to cook a hamburger, but how to, how to take care of a customer. See, that's the key. We haven't gotten to that yet, no. but there's always been a lot more to in and out than just cooking burgers That's and right. fries. Customers were very important to Harry, and uh, I learned a lot about the customer service from Harry Snyder. Did he teach you a lot of interpersonal skills? Did he talk uh, with you about that? Oh, definitely, because uh, here again, I was hired by Harry also. And uh, he, I'm sure these fellows agree, Harry was a unique person. I mean, he he could make you feel so good, and he, he had that uh, type of personality where you didn't mind working over or coming in early just because Harry asked you to. And he was just, uh, I think, one of a kind as far as we're all concerned here. He was, he was, uh, like, he was like a father to all three of us. That's right. Really? And Esther Snyder was uh, like a mother to all of us also. He was, 
She if was, there was a saint on earth, she would be it. I mean, truthfully, she was a great woman. She was loved by everybody. Everybody loved Esther Snyder. See, this whole story starts and continues with the family unit, That's doesn't right. it? That's right. The Snyder family is awesome. A little bit of a historical reenactment here. We're walking through the drive through There were two drive throughs here. And fellas, from the very early days, the big deal about In-N-Out was that it was a drive through That's right. Our whole business was predicated on the drive through And I think Harry understood that California, you know, people in cars. Yeah. And so, uh, but you didn't have to dress up to come to the in and out I mean, <laughs> I won't tell you some of the outfits we've seen over the years, but. Uh, <laughs> well, now there's a window right there that doesn't look like it was drive through No, that was for the people in uh, trucks or uh, neighborhoods that didn't have a car. That would walk over They'd walk order. over, but uh, the main bulk, what did you say, 95% was uh, through the drive through Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, to this day, I still like to sit in the car and eat my burger. Yeah. yeah. I still like it. And you told me that this spot right over here is historic, this right. empty spot. We had one patio table there, so a customer could either sit at the table and eat their burger or else sit in the car and eat their burger. And for years, the only way you could get an In-N-Out burger, basically, this was the basic design of all the In-N-Out burger outlets. That's right. That's, correct. That's right. Until 1979 when they built the first sit-down store. And there's still not that many sit-downs, are there? Oh, yeah. There's oh, there are a lot of sit-downs. <laughs> oh, yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of sit-downs. But you can still drive through even the ones that you can go in and sit yes, down. Yes, yes, just like this, like this here. All right, the adventure continues. We're starting here. It doesn't get any more historic than this. This is the corner of Francisquito and Garvey right here in Baldwin Park. This is it, store number one. Even though it was moved from right over where they built the freeway, it's still here. They're still here. And in and out Burger is still here. I feel like going to school. And what better place to go to school than the good old in and out University. And here is the Dean of Students right here. Jack, introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Jack Ruley, and I'm glad to meet you, Huel. But now, how are you connected with in and out You're not really the dean. Oh, uh, I, I'm the director of training for in and out All right, so there is a whole university here for future employees to go through. Yes, uh, we train all of the management here. So uh, throughout in and out Burger, if you want to go into management, that uh, we bring everyone down here. We have four levels of management, the entry level, then a third person, second person store manager. And then from there, you would come here and you'd spend a certain number of hours each week. Going to school. Going to school. All right, we're going to get the tour of the university. But before we go to school, I spotted something else over here, the in and out Burger Company store. And that's where we're going to head next. Jack, do many people know about this store? Well, more and more are finding out about it every day. Um, we have a much higher profile here. Before it used to be about a half a mile down at the, at the uh, commissary. Uh -huh. And it was behind gates and uh, people were hesitant to go there. But now with the exposure and uh, our store number one out here now, that people will wander over from there and wonder, well, what exactly is this? And they'll come in there and we have like 24 different t-shirts they can purchase and keychains and uh, like well, the actually, shirt you I have on. about the store because the last time I was here, I bought this shirt, this in and out shirt here, and everywhere I go, I get a lot of comments on this shirt. You know, it sure makes you look good, too. <laughs> you look very good in Let's this Let's go shirt. inside. <laughs> okay, we're inside the store, and I've met up with the, st are you the store manager? No, I'm just a store clerk. Your name is? Guillermina. You got me the shirt the last time I was yes, here. Yes, your you Hawaiian shirt. me in that. Yes. Look over here. The polo shirt. Look at the hats. The hats, yes. Get me excited about these in and out burger these hats. hats. These are our originals. And these, you know, uh, people definitely look for them because they have the original colors, the on, uh, original look at this. Uh, logo. Wow, that's beautiful. Yes. Boy, really, that's a great logo, isn't it? Yes, it sure is. And it has our arrow. People like the old stuff. Oh, now, definitely. these are the Hawaiian shirts yes. I bought. 
And then, oh look, look at this. We have beanies also, definitely. Yes, two different kind right here. This one is knit and it folds, it's perfect for the winter. Wow. Yes. And you've got in and out shirts over here, but what I'm really interested in, and I didn't get over here the last time I was here to look at these, explain what these are. Our t-shirts, you know, once a year we come out with a new t-shirt. It, uh, it's released uh, one day after Thanksgiving. So you see uh, they are in chronological order mm -hmm. and it, we have them from 1986. So all the way to the 2009. Do people come Perfect. in here every year to buy the new? Oh, yes. Yes, you bet they do. Yeah, so you they... have hardcore in and out Burger fans. Correct. Correct. From all over the country. And I must say, all over the world. Really? We have people coming from Germany, people coming from Switzerland, Japan. Yes. And they love, love our T-shirts. Okay, we are inside in and out University, and this is the lobby, an impressive lobby it is. Training is our future, and what is this little thing right here? Uh, it looks like more than an information booth to me. Yes, it is. Uh, what you see here is it's like a two-lane drive-through, a miniature one, and Rich Snyder felt that we wanted this design here so every day that all of us in this office came to work, it reminds us of where the money's made. It's made so in the minute, stores. So this is made to look like a drive-through. A two-lane drive-through, yes. <laughs> okay, now what kind of classes are taught inside the university? Okay, we have classes on motivation, we have classes on communication, on leadership, management, and as you can see right now, there's a class in there and you can hear them. Yeah, I hear them. Let's, let's go in and take a look. Are we allowed to open the door? Yes. Now, what is, what's going on in here? Okay, right there you see Lindsay Snyder, the owner of the company. And what she's doing is she does a culture and history class to perpetuate the history. So wait a minute, the owner comes here to talk with, and what are these, future managers? Yes, they're future managers, and she comes to every class. And uh, she has a... Uh, agenda she follows here, especially so they are immersed in the culture and know what the history, uh, where, the, where these people are going, where, they, where the company's been. And it's very important to her that everyone knows this. Now this is exciting. I'm standing here with, introduce yourself to everybody. Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay, you are a direct descendant of Harry and Esther. You are their... Granddaughter. So your position with the company now is... Uh, well, going to be owner, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you talk to these people about here at the university? Because these are all future employees of your company. Yeah, they're future managers. So um, really, I like to bring the family piece. We started as a very small family, a very small company. And, um, you know, I like to bring that family atmosphere. So when I meet with them, you know, I'm very open and honest and I do let them. Do they ask you questions? Yes. What do they want to know? Well, all sorts of things, you know, my vision for the company, um, you know, the favorite position for me to work in the stores. Did I work in the stores? Did you work in the stores? Yes, I did. <laughs> you didn't do the potatoes, did you? Ooh, that wasn't my strong point. I liked washing them, but not dicing them. <laughs> <laughs> so this really is true. The family all works in the store. Yes, that is true. And so. what do you hope to impart to them to keep them in this there really is an in and out tradition, isn't there? Yes, I like to empower them to be the Harry and Esters out there, to take the ownership and really treat each customer like they're their customer and to treat them like they're number one because that's why we're here today. Yeah. Do you think your grandparents ever had any idea that in and out was going to become what it has become? No way. <laughs> what do you think they thought? Well, I. I think that my grandpa had a great vision of doing something the best he possibly could and empowering others to do the same and uh, he did it but I don't think he had any idea that we would be here today with 234 stores. Okay, another first. We're coming into your office, the inner sanctum here, and this is like Control Central. What have we got up on the wall here, Jack? Well, Hugh, what we have here is we have every in and out represented here by magnets, and you can see it's by region and then by division, and then you see by store, 
And the ones in black are the store managers. The ones in red are the second assistant manager. Wow. The one in blue are a third assistant manager. So this is for all four Regions. states, all the regions. Yes. You know, you've got it all right here on the wall. Right here. So when we're going to call a store, we know who the shift people are at that store. Yeah. Wow. And these are always changing, aren't yes. they? Yes. Oh, it used to be so easy to keep this board up to date. Now this is changing every day. Yeah. People moving from store to store yes. and up in management and yeah. all over and the place. And new stores opening. Yeah. And I just noticed this on the floor here. Here, help me hold that up. You collect, they collect everything here at in and out You collect, what are we looking at here, Jack? Well, this is an old place, Matt, about 21 years old. And it's funny because I purchased one from in and out for in and out Burger off eBay, a 1971 that we had matted and framed. Some woman had it, and, you know, you never know. Did she go on a first date with some young man and that was precious to her? And then in some time later, she passed it on in her so family. So, wait a minute. They're selling paper placemats from in and out Burger on eBay now. Yes. And it, it cost me, I think, $30 for really? a placemat that probably cost a quarter of a cent. Do you change the placemats all the time, every yes. year, just yes. like you do your T-shirts? Even so sooner. We may have one one month, and then we'll have another one the next month. So we'll use four or five different ones a year. Do you think customers know that you're changing the placemats? Do they pay attention to that kind of... I bet you in and out customers do. I would say so, because... Uh, on some of them, they're on quality, and some of them are on customer service. Some of them are where we'll identify an individual at in and out like Chuck Pappas you met earlier today. He's on a placemat from years ago. Oh, so you actually put people, employees on the placemat. Yes. There's a whole display of glasses out here in the hall. I do not remember glasses in in and out burgers. Yes, in 1971, the first glass that we sold was the... Pepsi glass called the Tiffany glass for 29 cents. Look at You this. got that filled with the Pepsi Cola and you got to keep the glass. Mm -hmm. And that really spurred business. We ha had a lot of families come in like after school, they pick the kids up and they'd come in and they'd order these. And then we decided to go to the Looney Tune and yeah. they were really popular. Tweety and Sylvester and Petunia and Elmer Fudd and Rocky. All of them are here. Now, you don't still, there's Tom and Jerry. You don't still do Wonder Woman. I'm Batman. I'm sorry I missed all of this. Now, this is obviously part of history because you don't sell these anymore. No, no, no. Um, and then uh, you see the Indiana Jones here. We yeah. had a set of four when those movies started coming out. What do you do? Buy these back on eBay now for your corporate Some, headquarters? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I was going to say some, but I would say the majority, yes, that you go on eBay and there's a whole section on in and out and I look for what I don't have and then we put bids on it and it's usually pretty expensive by the time so we pick it up. So wait a minute, in and out has a whole section yeah. on eBay. Yeah, well, it's not ours, but it's people. That's and what I mean, selling in and out memorabilia. Paraphernalia, yes. So yeah. they're collecting still, aren't they? They sure are. I, I just bought some the other day, a couple of hundred dollars worth of glasses. He's opening the safe. We're in the safe room at in and out and Jack has gone in the safe. Not many people see this, do they? No, not many. <laughs> this is a big deal. Yes, it is. To see what is in this book from inside a very secure room with a very locked safe. Yes, you're right, and it's kept there all the time. It hardly ever comes out. And uh, what's kind of neat is everything that made in and out successful is in here. It's in this book. Okay, we have left the safe room. We've still got the brown leather-bound book here. This was called, had a name to it, didn't it? In-N-Out Bible. The In-N-Out Bible. And what exactly was in this Bible? Well, Harry, this was Harry's book, and he would we would go to his house, and he would, we had our own notebook, and he would read to us from here, and we would copy in our own notebook his notes or his his how to do things like how to how to window hop a car, or how to cook a hamburger, or how to make coffee. He had it all written it's, it's down. All, it's all here. 
And what would you do? Just kind of basically sit at his feet and listen to these we, instructions? Sit, yes, that's what we do. And today we do it the same way. Exactly the so same way. So you follow this Bible, yes. so to speak. Yeah, you know, pretty much everything we do today started here. Now, there's been some little changes here and there, but very, very few. I mean, Harry was very particular. This company spends a lot of money on training. We, we know it's important. People make it happen. You got to teach them. And wow. uh, Harry started it. This is amazing to see the amount of detail. It's just page after page after page of detail. That's right. I have to tell you something else, too. After we'd have a meeting, sometimes Mrs. Snyder would have a dinner for us. She'd barbecue steaks for us. Well, right, Bob? Yeah. and she he probably had it written here how she was supposed to do it. <laughs> she was great. Probably right. <laughs> he had everything else in here. Okay, we have left the In-N-Out University. And, Jack, it's one thing to talk about In-N-Out burgers and philosophy and mission statements and all of that. It's another to eat in and out burgers and we're not going in just any old in and out burger store are we no this is the new number one this is the number still number one even though the original number one is well it's really not that far away no no but it's inactive so this replaced number one as the new number one yes yes all right burgers just as good better <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. We got some of the original employees. Bob and Chuck aren't going to like that. Uh -oh. Let's go inside and test it out. We're going inside, in and out. Okay, we're inside, in and out, burger number one. Jack, I'm going to leave you for a few minutes and go okay. to work over here. I've got an appointment to hook up. I assume you're the manager. I am. Your name is? Steve Wyman. Okay, now this is exciting to be filming inside in and out because that doesn't usually happen, does that it? That never happens. TV cameras no, don't come in here. Not allowed. All right, well Very tell good. us a little bit about your career at in and out Burger because it started how many years ago? Uh, this is my 19th year, this month actually, October 22nd, October 28th was my 19th year. All right, how did you get started? I actually right out of high school. They opened up the in and out right down the street from my house in West Camina, and I got a little flyer in the mail uh, that they were accepting on vacation. So I just went down there and applied and got hired. And my whole goal at the time, I was out of high school and getting ready to start Mount Sac to start their fire academy. I was going to be a firefighter. You're going to be a firefighter. Firefighter. So like this was just a temporary kind of a summer job or something until you could become a firefighter. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Just a part-time job is all I was looking for, just while well, I was going to college. what was that like when you first started working for them? You know, the first couple months, I, I clicked to me right away that it was a great company. I worked for a great manager at the time, and it just the whole process, I saw how well they treated their employees and the whole reputation and the quality and what in and out stood for and just the whole thing. It, it only took me a couple months to decide maybe I want to stay here. So it was more, from the very beginning, it was more than just making burgers. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. The way the company treats their employees, the whole process of the quality, in and out stands so much for quality and friendliness and service and the cleanliness of our stores. And I knew the company was growing, being a private company, and I knew it was, a, for me, it was a no-brainer. How hard is it to move up through the ranks? Uh, you know, it's all based on individual, on your individual performance. But it, it takes time. Some people, you know, it takes time. Because you're in management now, right? Right, I'm a store manager. You're a store manager. Right, and right. how long would you do this before you move on to you something know, else? Some people it takes five years, some people it takes 15 years. Yeah, but this is your career. This is my, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And do you think a lot of these employees are gonna be with the company a long time? Uh, they probably will, yeah. they always have been. Yeah, the, 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 for a long time, yes, definitely. It's a great It's a great job for people that are going to school because we work very well around uh, the kids' school schedule. We're very flexible with our hours. You can work a day shift, you can work a night shift, you can only work weekends if you want to, only work Monday through Friday if you need to for school. It's a great job as far as that goes. Yeah. I think it's the best job out there for school. All right, now let's, we, we're talking about the job advancement. Let's talk a little bit about what's on the menu. Okay. Here, you walk over there and let me look at the menu. The menu says double-double, cheeseburger, hamburger, and french fries. It's a pretty simple menu. Very, it's, very simple menu, and I think that's one of the great successes of In-N-Out is our simple menu. Yeah, but there's more 
you can get more than is just on the menu. And this is what I've heard from everybody wanting me to ask about all the things you can get that aren't on the menu. There is some things. There's grilled cheese sandwiches for people that don't prefer meat. It's the same thing as the burger. You get the spread, you get the lettuce, the tomato, the onion. If you prefer it, roll the onion or raw onion, you get pickle on it. And instead of meat patties, we put two slices of melted cheese. So just like a grilled cheese sandwich like your parents used to make you when you were growing up, but it's on our hamburger bun with the lettuce and tomato and everything. We also have a Flying Dutchman, and what that is is two meat patties with two slices of melted cheese on it, stacked on top of each other. And you get no bun, you get no produce on it, no lettuce, no tomato. A lot of people that are on the low carb, you know, on the diet thing, they do, they How do that. How did all this come about? How did all this start? These these extra things. You know, there's there's rumors about a lot of it. The animals there's also an animal style burger, and what that is is it's fr we we fry the meat and mustard when it's thrown down on the grill, and it comes with grilled onion, pickle, and spread extra spread. And uh, I know that started at Old Number One back years ago. And, um, the way it started was it was a bunch of rowdy kids uh, in the parking lot that would come all the time and party on the lot and, and cause cause havoc and they uh, were animals they were exactly they would always order burgers like that so they named the burger animal style and i know that's where that came from the grilled cheese sandwich for people that don't prefer meat we have to accommodate people that don't like meat and then there's also a protein burger and what that is is a low carb burger so people that don't like the bun that are on a diet so wait a minute if there's almost as much to order off the menu as there is on the menu there's 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 some items there's some items and it's ever growing uh, no, that's it. We're stopped. <laughs> because it's kind of like an urban myth, isn't it? All the things it you can order. It is. In and Out has a very good reputation and a good, very good following. But I mean, all these extra things. Oh, it's yeah. kind of an inside thing an that inside people thing. know and pass on from generation to generation. The way I found out about the animal style was my father. My father, like I said, it was a firefighter. Him and his crew would go to the local in and out by his fire station when I was a kid, and they would order it like that. And this is when I was a kid, you know, 15, 16 years old. And he came home one day and told me about it. He goes, next time you go to in and out try this. So I ordered it, and I loved the it. The animal burger. Exactly. That's how I found out about it. So you're right. It is through rumor and through word of mouth and reputation. And you know, the, you're, in, you're in the heart of in and out country, obviously, being in Molo Park in the San Gabriel Valley. You get to the stores that are further outskirt. You know, some of those stores, they don't get quite a lot of stuff that orders that are on the menu. They don't get as many. This is the heart. This is the soul of in and out country right here. In the heartland right here. This is this is it. All number one's right across the freeway right there. And we rebuilt this store five years ago in November. And now here we are in a dining room store so the customers can come sit down and eat and enjoy their food in a nice, nice environment with, you know, air conditioner and nice area. So you are in heartland of in and out burger right here. This is, this is it. A lot of in and outs very close around here. Within three or four miles, there's several in and outs around here. When you get out to the valley area and you know out, out in Palm Springs and out in Arizona and stuff, there might not be another in and out for miles, but around here, there's a lot of in and outs. Okay, here she comes. You're delivering, what is this? Two double doubles. Two double doubles. Yes. And you're delivering it with a smile. Of course, always. That's the best way to do it. Now, did they have to teach you to smile or do you just naturally, naturally are you that kind of a person? Working here is so easy to smile. Really? Yeah, it makes it easy working with all my coworkers. You're not just saying that because you learn that in your in your training. No. I mean, you really are that kind of a person. Yes. Because you know we hear that about. I mean, that's what's kind of distinctive about In-N-Out Burger employees. You're always smiling. Yeah, it makes it easy to work here. Everybody's having a good time. It's like you're working, but you're having fun at the same time. What's fun about serving burgers all day? I think it's the people you work with, the customers, everybody's really cool. Most of the customers, some of them we already know, so it's kind of like we have a friendship thing going yeah, on. Yeah. I like it. I really do. And they come hungry and they leave happy. Exactly. All the time. That's our priority. Oh, now we're watching the french fries. You got a key job here. Yes, yeah, we do. Now, yeah, we are do. you the French fry guy, or do you go from job to job? No, here? actually, I go from job to job. Yeah, so, we, we, we kind of bounce around. Everybody does French fries. Yeah, everybody everybody gets does burgers. Every, no, I mean, these guys right here, it takes a while for them to do the burgers, but everybody gets a chance to do the fries. Everybody gets a chance to do the French fries over there, hand everything out. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. Now, is are French fries the first stop on the ladder up the ladder of success? Do you start with the potatoes? Actually, no. You start actually outside, actually on the dining room. That's where you start. Everybody sees the first face out in the dining room, make sure it's all spot and clean. Then you work your way out of the fry area. 
and then where do you go from here? And then from here, you go where, where you make the burger smile. That's where you go next. The burger smile. The burger smile. And then you I'll make them smile. smile. You make them smile. But I put that frown upside down, you know? Now, are you planning on being here for a career? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got a grill going over here. We got another grill going over here. The whole idea was that it was always busy. Something was always going on. And we have another grill back here for uh, like, uh, you know, a weekend and uh, a night well, show. That's kind of part of In-N-Out too, isn't it? Standing up there and kind of looking back here and seeing all this activity. Our, our philosophy is, and always will be, we have nothing to hide. You know, we're, we're not behind a wall and you order or something and it comes around. We have nothing to hide. We want to show you how we do things. Let's talk a little bit about the ingredients, about the food itself, because from the very beginning, that's been... It's been consistent. It's never changed. What we have right here, we had 50 years ago when I started. And what have we got right here? It we looks like lettuce and tomatoes to lettuce. me. We got the tomatoes, we got the spread, and we have the bun, which is made from a sponge dough, the old-fashioned way, the way it was made 50 years ago, we still have them made today. In other words, these buns have no shelf life, basically. They, they'll only last a couple of days. What about the meat? The meat is all 100% beef. We do it all ourselves, and that hasn't changed either. When I started, we were patting the meat patties, and they're still doing it today. It's frozen? No, never frozen. Never frozen. We, we would never use a frozen patty. Everything is fresh. We get the chucks in. We bone them, we grind them, and we patty them, and we deliver them ourselves. I'm just trying to think in my own mind what it is about In-N-Out burgers that separate them from other burgers in people's minds. Well, I personally think it's the quality of the product that we put in there, what we serve, and how it's served. Is it the bun? That's part of it. Is it the tomatoes? That's part of it. Is it the lettuce? That's part of it, too. Is it the meat? I think the meat and the bun are probably the two most important part of it because the tomatoes and the lettuce and the onions, although they're number one quality, basically anybody could probably buy them as, as they wanted to. Yeah, but it's the combination. It's a combination of it and it's all made fresh. Because there's an In-N-Out smell too. That's right. That's I know when I'm coming to an In-N-Out right. right. burger. That's you're absolutely right. Okay, we've talked about animal style. This is animal it, style. The one, the one and only. Now, why do you get an animal style? Why Let's do I get an animal style? Take a look at that guy. <laughs> why not? I uh, know, but it. how did you hear about animal style? Oh, word of mouth. You know, good word spreads fast. So when you walk in here, it's obviously not on the menu, but it doesn't have to be. As long as the locals know about it, you see it, you wonder, what is that? Uh -huh. How come my burger doesn't look like that? Then you find out. and. Well, it, it's, it's nice because you feel like you, you know, you're part of a community when you know about something that out of towners probably don't know about. They're smiling from <laughs> ear to ear. What are you what are you all having today? The double double uh, burger. Double double. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. having the double double burger too. So yeah. you all always get the same thing. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's just say I've never been to an in and out burger before. Uh -huh. How would you describe this? to somebody who had never been here before. The whole experience. The, the, the hamburger is very tasty and it's very good. That's why we always come here. What about the smiling? The smiling the, the smiling face of the, uh, yeah. the cashier. Oh yes, they're very friendly. Because they're very, always smiling. Very friendly, they're always smiling. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're always ready to serve you. Mm -hmm. And they're always ready to give you that double-double. Oh yes. That's yes. not too much for you to eat? <laughs> no. <laughs> How do you make a burger smile? Well, it starts with the cheese. We go ahead, we fold it. Um, Right here, like this. Uh huh. And we put it facing um, the left. So there's a certain way you fold the cheese. Yes. All right. So we got the cheese on there. Then what happens? Um. Then as it melts, it gives it that natural smile over the burger <laughs> patty. <laughs> <laughs> and when we pull the burgers and we wrap them, we make sure that everything's even at an angle. Wow. It gives it a smile. Do you think people appreciate that? Do they know you're making their burgers smile? Yes, I think so. I think so. Okay, you're delivering. What are you getting here? Um, I'm getting a vegetarian. Wait a minute. Uh, you're getting vegetarian. Yeah, the cheese and the buns are so good. I, I can't help it. Look at how large the tomatoes are. Oh. I, I never stopped coming here, even since I turned vegetarian. 
you still come. I still come. And you're still smiling. <laughs> That's part of working here, isn't yes. it? Yes, it to is. smile. Yes. Now, what happens when you have a grumpy customer? Well, we have to do the best we can and give them the best smile. And we have to understand that sometimes they could have problems or they ha they're stressed out or they have family in the hospital. So uh -huh. our job is to help them. And you not never know why they're being grumpy. No. There might be a good reason. Yes. We're following you. What are you eating? I'm eating a protein veggie burger. Now, this is the first time we've seen one of these. Look, there's no bun. No bun and no meat. Have you ever backslid and had a double-double? Come on, be oh, yes. honest. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're delicious. <laughs> but for now. But for now, for today, for right now, this is what it is. <laughs> Do you always get the same thing? I usually go with the 4x4, but today I'm just going a little lighter. See, the 4x4 is not on the menu. It's a little secret. Yeah. yeah keeping, the, keeping the little secret. We're doing historic research here about all these things. Did When did animal style burgers start and all this stuff of ordering stuff that's not on the menu? When did that start? The animal burger started in store number one. And when we would fix our own burgers at night to eat, we would fix a mustard fried, grilled onion, extra spread, add pickle. And people at the walk up window would see us making this and say, what is that? and we would tell them what it is, and they never could remember. So one Friday night, one of the fellas said, call an animal burger, and we'll know exactly what you want. See, this is kind of like an urban myth that keeps, you know. That's right, and when one customer sees it, then they want to try it the next yeah. time they come in. Well, actually, it's, it's sort of, uh, you're in and on a secret when you know how to order certain things or not on the menu, and it, and it makes, them sort of feel like, hey, I know something that everybody else oh, doesn't not know. Not on the menu. That's correct. And that goes with the, you can get a three by three. Four by four. Four by five four. Five by five, you can get anything you want. So if you're <laughs> friends with some of the employees, you can get a five by oh, five. Oh, you bet, uh, you bet. We kind of limit them to four by fours now. <laughs> that, that they, because they used to kind of got out of hand where people would come in and want a 15 by 15 or a 20 by 20. Well, some of the college kids used to come and get the, uh, yeah. We can't wrap them, and they're just... So know. people were coming in ordering a 15 by 15. Right. Here's the In-N-Out Burger Cup. Yes. And Mark, I got to ask you about this cup, because every one of my friends, when they found out I was doing a program about In-N-Out, made me promise that I would ask somebody in charge and somebody who would know why the Bible verse is under the bottom lip of all your cups. That's, that's a great question, and you know a lot of people ask us that, but it's really simple. Back in the late 80s, Rich Snyder put that on the bottom of the cup. He felt compelled to do that, and it's, it's going to stay there. Rich is gone. He's, he's passed on, but it's something that he did, you know, and that's Harry's, one of Harry and Esther's boys, and he started it, so we're, we're going to keep it on there. And it just kind of basically uh, reflects the principles it does. Of, of your business, of, of your the way you run things, of your business ethics. You know, Rich wanted to be a great employer. I know that I do my best, and, and Lindsay's doing her best to be a good employer. And it's just, you know, those kind of values, you know, they ring true with everybody. It's good stuff. And uh, I'm real proud that it's on the cup. That's it? I That's... thought there was some kind of, you know, secret, hidden, mystic thing. But it's just as simple as it's... Rich Snyder wanted to put some guiding principles. Yes, he did on the cup yes, underneath the lip in a very unobtrusive, right. non-confrontational way, but in a way that would make a statement. Exactly. And you know, the word has kind of gotten out on it, and a lot of people do know and some don't, but it, it's not in your face. It's just something he did. And um, who are we to undo it? You know, he was a great man. Well, it's another one of the in and out traditions. Right, exactly. And we are a company of, of tradition. Right here on the cup. Now, as much fun as we were having inside store number one, watching them cook up the burgers and visiting with all those happy customers, turns out Mark still had some other places at the In-N-Out complex he wanted to show me. Okay, we've come outside the corporate headquarters, and Mark, there's a lot going on in this facility here. Lots of acres. Lots of buildings, lots of in and out trucks, but all these trucks 
are just sitting here. They're not going anywhere. Yes, uh, these trucks just came in actually this morning. They've been out uh, delivering and now they're loading up again. Oh, they've already been out this yes, morning. Yes, yes. So we want to deliver during the nighttime or in the early mornings because uh, you know, these are awfully big trucks to get on the lots and uh, it could really cause havoc with the customers and What's everything. What's in these trucks? Well, you know, it's uh, going to be beef and potatoes and buns and uh, soda pop and shake mix. It's all in there. So you have all of this stored here. Yes. But your beef is fresh beef. Yes, so it is. this whole warehouse in here is full of fresh beef. It's also full of fresh beef. We get uh, the chucks, the front chucks of so the, the cows and the steer and uh, we bone and grind all of our beef here at In-N-Out Burger and uh, you know we have total control that way. How big an area does this center serve right here? This is going to serve uh, all the way to pretty much Central California and to Arizona, Nevada and it's going to do those and then uh, in Lathrop we have a a smaller but but beautiful nice pretty good size when I say smaller it's still pretty big uh, facility in Lathrop that well, services maybe it's Northern a good California. idea we got here in between routes right. there would have been a there's a lot of going and coming here isn't there there is and you know and I'll tell you something a lot of people don't really know and uh, our stores get delivered every other day that makes sure that they always have fresh product they don't need to over order and have stuff sitting on the shelves Every other day, a truck shows up at an in and out in the early morning or late at night, and it, it drops off the produce, the beef, and all those things. And there's a lot cheaper ways to go, but at in and out that's how we do it. I mean, we are committed to freshness, and uh, you know, our trucks always look great too. I mean, we're real proud of how they look. We always get compliments about the trucks on the road, and that's just a testament to our well, cleanliness. Well, they're like and... traveling billboards. Well, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. Absolutely. And something else that happens here you don't just have the meat and the buns and the potatoes you have other things going on we on do this. we have a maintenance facility that they could pretty much do or fabricate anything here at Baldwin Park we have a truck depot that's really state-of-the-art where they work on our diesel trucks and clean them and all those good things too so, so it's a whole this is a center this is right really here. where the operations of in and out takes place is here in Baldwin Park it's a beautiful thing and uh, it's amazing the people that work here and the jobs that they do. The tour just keeps on going because Mark keeps getting excited about showing us <laughs> all the different things that are going on over here. Yeah, well, you know, I'm very proud of what we do at In-N-Out Burger, and this is just another department to be proud of. You know, we've got our own sign shop. A lot of people don't realize that, but that's also all done in-house. All the lettering at the store, whether it's on the windows or it's a menu. It's all in-house. It's all in-house. And these are the two sign guys. Those guys are awesome. I have a feeling you guys have been around for a while. Yes, sir. You're the- Actually, you're, that's true. <laughs> How many years you work for it? Uh, 44 this year. You're kidding. No, sir. So Mr. you did some of the original oh, signs. Oh, yes. Mr. Schneider gave me my first assignment in 1966. That is amazing. And you, sir? Joe Kuntz. I've been working for the company a little over 10 years now. Oh, you're the baby in the group. That's correct. You're still learning from this guy That's over right. here. Show us what you do. Obviously, this is one thing here that you get to make up the menus. Yes, we produce all the menus for all the stores. Um, as we've grown, uh, the number's gotten much bigger. It takes us about uh, 900 menus now to make a change uh, throughout all the stores. Now, how do you do these? Do you do these are all screen printed. Screen printed? Uh, yes, we create the positives and, uh, and produce them uh, here in the shop. What about this one? Well, in and out Burger here soon. That's this, a big announcement. Yes, these are put out uh, as our stores are being built so that, uh, uh, that people are around are aware. And these, this, this is all lettered by hand, this particular. So one. wait a minute. Come on over here, fellas. Yes, this is hand lettered. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The convex with the outline and the inset uh, border. Not much of that goes on anymore. Well, that's probably true. But at in and out we want everything to be as perfect as we can get it. So we create uh, everything that... Uh, that we think looks good. Fellas, this is old school. That's true. You're old school. Now, I am, certainly. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> but I still am having too much fun to quit. Well, it's one thing to see the big old trucks being loaded up and the trucks being washed and all the mechanical work being done on them and kind of tour the area here. 
It's another to visit. Look at this place right here. It's called BTV. Do you have any idea what BTV means? Well, if you don't, we're getting ready to find out. Right. <laughs> this really took me off guard. <laughs> I've seen it all now. Yes. This is a surprise. Yes. Where have you brought us? Well, you know, there's a lot going on here. This is a BTV, Burger Television. Burger Television. That's right. Who came up with Burger Television? Rich Snyder. Rich Snyder. He had a vision for what he thought, how we needed to operate, how we needed to communicate to all the associates, just not the people in management. And uh, he came up with Burger Television. What is Burger? I assume you are part of Burger Television. Yes, sir. Your name, sir, is? My name is Justin. What do you do for Burger Television? Well, what is Burger Television? Who sees it? Burger Television is seen by all the associates in the company, um, everybody who works at in and out So every store gets a DVD every month from us, telling them what's going on in the company, important training things to know. Um, so it's kind of an in-house television program. If you want to know everything about in and out and you work for in and out then BTV is the place to go. So what do you do? You put all that together here, burn a bunch of DVDs, and send them out. We are. We're flying all over the place, going to any stores that have, you know, a new opening, um, events, contests, things like that. We're, we're going all over the place shooting, and this is kind of our little hub. We come back here, edit. We're, you know, living in here sometimes on the weekends, getting everything put together and Do making sure Do your friends, sure when you tell them you work for BTV, they don't know what you're talking about? They don't know what I'm talking about, but when they find out, they're usually a little bit jealous. They all want to know about In and Out. They want to know any, oh, you know, the great stories about it. Yeah, oh, how see, do they come In and Out, In and Out television. That. Yes, yes, exactly. All the stories about In and Out yeah. that you want to know. Exactly. I mean, we use it for training. We use it. Uh, maybe I send out a personal message to everybody. Uh, it could be as simple as uh, Merry Christmas and Thanksgiving, or it could be a little more serious on what we can do better, you know, to be more successful. So it is kind of a fun corporate video every it, month. It's always upbeat. It's good. It's special. Um, these guys do a great job. It's amazing what they put out. Watching BTV. Welcome to BTV. Welcome to BTV. All right, that's it. That's been our day here at In and Out Burger in Baldwin Park. Thank you very much for your Thank stories, you. for you. guiding us through all of this. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. You started working here a long time ago, and you've got great stories to tell, and you've gotten me fired up about the, before today, I just had the double-double. Now I'm getting into the triple-triple, the four by four, yeah, the animal burger, the animal fries. Protein burger. Pro, that's the vegetarian that's thing. Right. Grilled the cheese. grilled cheese. All the things that aren't on the menu, but as we have learned today also, there's a lot more to In-N-Out Burger than just the food, although the food is very important. And Mark, you hadn't really been with us much of the day, but boy, these gentlemen are, and, and people like them, are the real story behind the success of In-N-Out Burger. You know, um, we work for a, a great family, the Snyder family, but. The truth is uh, all that hard work had to take place and somebody had to lead the way and somebody had to do it. You visited with four people that this company was built on their back, their hard work, and they set, they set the standards, they set the tempo, and uh, we continue to try to live up to their expectation. Yeah, and, but you and know Harry's. what, now nothing against them, but Harry and Esther yes. are the ones who set oh, the yes. standard. Yes, they did. Actually, you're absolutely <laughs> right about that. Especially you've seen the Bible. So. Yeah, yes. I've seen yes. it. Yes. Now, these guys were with us earlier today. You weren't here. They're not too happy with the condition old number one is in. Can you help us out a little bit? Let's end this thing on a positive note. Well, you know, I do have some good news. What we're going to do here with number one is we're in the middle of revamping it. We're doing some uh, drawings and what it's going to be like. We're going to restore it to the original 
looking number one that's a single lane drive through and we're going to make it a place where somebody could bring their car and pull it in and take a picture and we've got people coming here all the time snapping pictures so we're going to dress it up just like it was back in the old day so people can drive their old cars in here like it's a drive through exactly and get a photo so you mean people are still coming by even outside the fence all to the snap time. pictures yes they do they do see this proves my point in and out burger is much more than just a hamburger chain you better believe it, it. is quintessentially part of life in Southern California, in and out Burger is a way of life for a lot of people. It is. It is. That is very true. And I will tell you, the people that work here are the heart and soul of this country, of America. And they've got great values and they just work hard. The work ethic here is strong. And I couldn't be more proud of the people that work here. Well, I got to tell you, the work ethic started with you fellas. It continues on today. The smiles, look at them. They're all smiling, too. The smiles are still here. The good food is still here. The whole ethic behind what made In-N-Out what it is today is still here. Yes, it is, and uh, it's going to be here for a long time. You know, Lindsay's uh, our owner, and she's the granddaughter of Esther and Harry, and uh, she's committed to keeping this private and family-owned, and she's, uh, she's a great young lady. She's uh, very much a part of what's going on. She's a student of our culture, and uh, this thing's going to go on for a long time. It is a culture. It is a culture, and we have been allowed, and thank you very much for thank allowing us in today, because this has been a real first for television to be able to, first one. to see this. Boy, what a day we have had. I hope you've had as much fun as we have, just kind of checking all this out and finding out the real story behind in and out It doesn't get any more quintessentially California than in and out in and out Burger is definitely part of California's goal. Thumbs up and go. smiles all around. It's all about in and out. It's all about this dream started by Harry and Esther Snyder back in 1948. And for a hamburger that'll put a smile on your face Ooh, this is the one Yeah, this is the place Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed our adventure inside in and out Burger, which is definitely a fine example of California's gold. Now, if you'd like to go on this adventure again or share it with family or friends, it's available on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away. in and out in and out, that's what hamburger's all about.